Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I thought I would talk about my 8 foot BD pumper that I restored years ago. This is going to be a general purpose video for all windmills of the water pumping type. So let's get into it. Basically these were used back in the day when there was no power, even when there was power. The only time you really see them around in use today or in the you know the, the modern times is when Mennonites use them and stuff and there's a huge following of people like me that just like them and have them restored in their yard but since this isn't on a tower I thought it would be the perfect time to show you guys what they do how they work because I've had a lot of people that like my videos on showing how my mechanical stuff works and you can't tell when something's you know 40 50 30 feet in the air so let's get into it and get talking about how they work and let's We'll just show you around. So this one was made in Canada, but they all have the same principle. The real common ones are Air Motor Company. There's, there was hundreds of them. If you are interested in these, check out a book called by T. Lindsay Baker called The Field Guide to American Windmills. So most windmills have 18 blades on them. Pretty well all, they, they, all of them do. I don't know why 18, but that's the amount. There was a few manufacturers that had different amounts, but uh, we'll get to talking about the principles of them here and show you what goes on and with them. So most of them are about a three to one back gear ratio. That means that this mill turns around three times the fan to one revolution of the pump rod. And what the pump rod is, it's right in the center here it would be attached to a hand pump. So back in the day, you would have a hand pump that you would go out and go like this. And when you did that motion of pumping, it was bringing a rod up and down. Well, this windmill takes place of your hand doing the pumping. So as you can imagine, everybody now goes to their tap for water and it's an inconvenience to turn on their tap. You gotta have a touchless tap now, you know, you gotta touch it and it turns on. Back then you had to pump your water outside and this took over pumping so you could go and have this fill up your water tank or fill up a cattle trough or whatever you wanted it to fill it filled filled up some people use them for irrigating they would bring water down ditches you know there's all kinds of different purposes but let's get to talking about it here and show you what's all goes on on them so basically this main principle of a windmill is you have your 18 blades, which I restored this a few years ago. The paint is coming off and forgive me for that. But in the early days you had a, had no helmet here, we'll call it. They had a uh, open gear system that you had to go up and grease. So it was a regular job to go up and grease the windmill. But this is actually an oil bath model. This was made in the mid 1930s, this one. So it's full of oil in here till you know, up until here. And as it spins, it circulates oil through to lubricate everything. But uh, there is a brake on them and the brake is applied to shut off the windmill. And what happens is there's a few different principles of them is this spring here and the brake and everything work together. I have it on a ratchet strap, but this piece right here normally would go down to the bottom of your tower and you would pull on that with a cable and when you pulled on that the fin the tail tail vane here will come in parallel to the blades and when that comes in parallel to the blades that means that these blades here which are normally pointed into the wind are parallel with the wind so when so it turns in the wind and doesn't want to turn because the brakes holding it off and it's just not getting any wind on the blades because it's spinning with the wind. So if there was a large storm coming or something that you, or you didn't want any more water, you would shut it off the windmill and it would, that tail would come in and go into play there. I'll try and set that up here for you guys in a bit. But for now, let's show you the inner workings of how a windmill works to pump water. If I lost you earlier, this is your pump rod that goes up and down. So as I turn this here, I'll give it a spin here. Imitate wind, it's not a windy day. You'll watch this. See how that's going up and down. It's 
So like I said, every three revolutions of the wheel produces one revolution of this. And that's how it gets the torque to pump the water. So what I'm gonna do is pause the camera for a second and I'm gonna pop off the top cap of this and show you guys the inner workings. All right, so I'll come around here. So our main principle here is we have our oil bath, as you can see the oil down in there. It's 10 weight oil, which is very common. It can pivot on here, which is the whole uh, goal of this setup here is that the pump rod can swivel as the windmill turns whatever way it would like into the wind. And as this spins, they spin clockwise. There is some that spin other ways, but this here model and a lot of the common models turn clockwise. Let me get it going here. So as this spins in the wind, it goes around on these gears. It's just like an engine, if you're familiar with engines. And it will go up and down like that. And that rod goes to there. And from here on, this piece here, you could attach wood to here. Some people use steel, whatever. And it would go down the 30 feet of your tower and attach to your pump. And yeah, that's basically how it works. So obviously this is just for display purposes now. And that's how the inside of a windmill works. I will demonstrate the shutoff mechanism on how they shut off for going out of the wind, but that's your basic principle of a windmill and how they work. They are very simple, last a long time, and are really a reliable system that, I mean, if this one's almost 100 years old and Everything on here, I've taken it apart, put it back together and painted it. But if I didn't do that, it would still be a functional windmill today. A lot of times you will see them with the tails tore off, whatever tore off. I had to replace some parts like this spring here, which I got from a local fellow and got that replaced. But otherwise I basically took it apart and painted it up and it's on to its new life being a display piece. Like I said earlier, this would normally be attached to a, a a crank on the bottom of your tower, but in this case, I just have it attached to a ratchet strap. So I'll release the tension here. You see that comes up there. As this comes up, the tail's folding in. There's still a bit of tension on this ratchet strap. Why it hasn't folded in all the way, so I'll aid it here. Okay, so there I gave it a little bit of help and the tail's in. So now that this is parallel with the wind, this tail will keep this parallel with the wind so the blades don't want to turn. Sorry, I've been having some issues with my gimbal that I'm using for you guys to give you smooth video. Anyways, since that turns, what happens is when this turns, this whole mechanism, basically this metal goes up and I won't get into it. But what happens is it applies your brake. So there's, as I push on here, this one's well adjusted. If I give it a really hard turn, it will, or a really hard push, it will turn. But basically it applies the tension there. All right, that gimbal fell a few times and kept stopping working on me. So forgive me, we're just using the old handheld here, but I'm gonna bring the windmill out here for you guys and show you how it works. Okay, so now that you've seen how it can be pulled in for a storm and how everything works, many of you guys are probably gonna be asking, how does it govern? And how does it govern is basically what a governor is, is that something does not overspeed. And you're thinking if you have, you know, a 50 mile an hour wind or 
uh, you know, 80 kilometer an hour wind if you're in uh, metric con country. How does this stop from flying apart and going too fast? Because if the nature of centrifugal forces, like centrifugal forces, when it stuff spins, it wants to go outwards and it wants to fly apart. So we're going to show you how they govern it. It's a really simple system and all of them basically work on the same design. So if you look at this gearbox here, and we're going to show you the relation to the tail. So you see the tails right there, gearbox is right here. So at the center, the tail is located about right behind here. Maybe a little bit more over actually. See this square stud right here, or this drain plug? Your tail's located directly behind that. So with our tail located directly right there, and our gearbox or our fan hub is mounted to the side, probably a, it's probably about four inches, five inches over there. It looks a lot closer in camera. So what happens is when this is spinning really fast, it wants to technically, since it's going right hand, it kind of wants to turn itself in like this. And since there's a big spring here, attached back to that tail, what happens is it's under spring tension constantly when I let out that ratchet strap. There is some systems that work opposite to that and that's just the mechanical ways of different manufacturers and I love reading about it and just understanding it all. But see this large spring here, it's attached back to your gearbox. So the faster this goes, the more it wants to spin and the nature of centrifugal force makes it want to overcome the spring tension. Sorry, there was no way I was going to show you guys that while trying to hold this. So as this spins like this, it wants to spin. The wind has a force keeping this tail straight this way and this wants to overcome that because of this spring. So what happens is this spring will go like this. See how I can bend this? That goes back out. What happens when the centrifugal force gets too high? It will say this is spinning really fast. It will slowly bring this like this. And what happens is when your tail moves, it turns it out of the wind. And when you turn the blades out of the wind that's coming at it, it will slow down the speed. And then once the speed slows down, the spring comes back out and it'll turn back into the wind. And that's how it governs. It might be complicated, it might be simple. If that didn't explain it very well, I'll make another video on it. All right, that's how a farm windmill works or a water pumping windmill. A lot of people refer to them as farm windmills because that's where you normally seen them. So anyways, that's how they work. And this is mine just set up as display and I thought it would be perfect to show you guys what uh, all goes on inside that gearbox and how they shut off to stay safe in storms and what their purpose was. I hope you enjoyed the video and please give the channel a rate and a subscribe and check it out for more mechanical how-tos and seeing what's going on with stuff. Thanks for watching.